Hey everyone, I'm Ashley and this is the Anya Mike Show and we are talking about something really, really important today and that is your KPIs, other known as key performance indicators. And one of our mantras here at Anya is that what gets measured is what actually is going to allow us to get toward our goal. And yet I see so many companies making one fatal mistake and it's executing all of these incredible ideas without having a way to track them. And in marketing world, what gets met, what doesn't get measured doesn't matter because at the end of the day, if you do not have a benchmark, a parameter to be able to define what success is, then how are you supposed to know what to keep doing? How are you supposed to identify what's working? what isn't working, where to invest your hard earned marketing dollars into your budget so that you can create more of those results. And that is the power of having, creating and establishing and of importantly measuring those KPIs. So on your mark, get set and listen. Okay. So let's break it down really quickly before we dig into the nitty gritty. How do we create KPIs? Okay. So key performance indicators are essentially, again, the benchmarks and the data that we need to track. Most people are subjective, right? They have opinions based on their beliefs, their cultures, whatever it may be. But what I love about key performance indicators and numbers is that they are completely objective. They are a way to be able to measure, to be able to definitively decide what success is. I love them for a lot of different areas of our business, including revenue tracking, profit margins. I love them for employee and contractor um, contractor kind of evaluation. I love them for personal evaluation too, for personal evaluation, because it's very easy for me to compare myself against a number instead of to diminish or inflate my success based on what is subjective. And so, of course, the same is true with your marketing. Having and setting KPIs is really, really important for you to be able to establish what success looks like. Otherwise, when it comes to you, your team, companies you work with, it can be really difficult. So as we're setting these KPIs, here's what I see often when people first start trying. Well, one, they don't have them, but two, they set them in a vacuum. And what I mean by this, you see it all the time in the online coaching space or in just the industry in general, is an example of someone running advertising campaigns sets a KPI of three to five dollars per lead. This is great. This is a great starting point to be able to have something to measure and a goal. But the issue with these a lot of KPIs that I see is that they're almost made in a vacuum, meaning that the long term goal and the importance of what the overall objective or outcome is, isn't always taken into consideration for the whole picture. For example, I'll give you a client that comes to mind. And we had, and we've had this, and it's just not one client. It's honestly a lot of clients that will set a parameter and a benchmark for a certain cost per lead. Let's say that cost per lead is $3. And we hit that all day long. Fantastic. The issue is that when we're just basing our KPIs off of one decision and not the overall strategy or plan and setting them holistically, that $3 lead doesn't necessarily equate to profit. Because what I see with a lot of people is we can get this number down, but if they are not making a profit off of what it is that they are selling, then this metric isn't substantial or significant. And so when we're setting KPIs, we have to be very, very intentional to make sure that we have a strategic plan of first where our business is going, but then how our marketing objectives support those objectives and then have the KPIs underneath. One of the mistakes that I've made is doing this backwards, setting the KPIs first and the goals last, but really it should flow from the top down and your KPIs are just the way that you measure and enforce everything that's happening up here. So how do we set realistic KPIs then? Well, let's use the example of a coach or a course creator, somebody that's maybe using a live launch vehicle or a webinar or something. A better metric to track instead of cost per lead would probably be the number of people that purchase from ads and the earnings per lead, because it's more important that somebody buys from that ad and that lead is profitable instead of just getting that acquisition cost down. I see this a lot of time for live launches right now, coaches that are live launching and just want to hit 
They don't want their lead costs to go up, which I'm here to tell you, even if we can get them down to a degree, they're, they're going to be up. Your Facebook is up 200%. Uh, whether or not you choose to believe that is up to you. But guess what? The cost to acquire your clients is going up. So you need to decide the best tactic to be able to afford that or if it is profitable for you or because maybe you're selling something that's too lower ticket, you don't have an established sales funnel. There are a lot of other issues. And so the cost going up just means you need to be more strategic if you're using advertising as a part of your strategy in the overall way that you attract people. It's beside the point. Okay, so that's just one example of a KPI. Another example would maybe be a metric like engagement on social media, right? Are people actually engaging with your content? Because at the end of the day, followers, if your goal is brand awareness and your goal is to create an impact and to reach more people, then sure, you can do that with followers. You absolutely can. And the metric can become 10,000 followers. But if you are really wanting to measure people on your Instagram page that are engaging with you as potential buyers, then it would become engagement of people commenting, inquiring about services. So the key is that most people are not thinking about their long-term goals. They're seeing everything through this very short sight instead of actually thinking realistically about what do I want out of my business? What is really important? What is moving the needle right now and setting KPIs that way? So that's the first step. The next is, okay, so once you've identified what are your goals, you need to kind of take your business goals and then set them to tangible outcomes. So based on my goal to have a profitable course and to get 10 to 15 people to purchase this course, I need to get X amount of leads to buy, not just leads to attend the webinar to buy, okay? Uh, but let's kind of go through another example of how we set these really realistically it's important to set maybe 10 to 15 KPIs in your marketing because what you need to understand too is not every key performance indicator you track is going to be one that you keep. Your business is fluid. It is evolving. It is changing. And what you are measuring now may change in significance based on the way that this industry works and in several months from now. And so it's really, really important to not just put all of your success on this one box, but that you're again, looking at the future of your business and your overall goals and setting objectives that way. And so that's where setting multiple KPIs is really important. The next thing that you need to consider is having somebody held accountable for those KPIs. There's no point in creating any kind of key performance indicator if you're not monitoring it weekly or monthly in some capacity. Otherwise, you have no way to gauge or barometer to be able to understand if you're successful or not. So having someone assigned, whether it's you, whether it's a team member, whether it's inadvertently kind of an agency, you want to make sure that you're setting those, that somebody has ownership of them so that they are happening. And if it's somebody else that you're bringing in externally, helping them understand the why, because the other factor is if you don't necessarily have a marketing background, you want to make sure that the KPIs are effective for your business and for your model. Uh, one a lot of times we see with clients, they have this idea and they come in with these huge goals, but what they are saying, what they actually want are not always in alignment. And so a lot of times we have to do some work to uncover those. So how then does this contribute to our goals? How does, how do KPIs really help us hit them? Well, we want to, of course, whatever our goal is, it's usually something along the lines of getting more clients, attracting more people, building our audience, creating more impact in order to know what's basically where to spend our marketing dollars. We want to know what's working and doing more of it. I see so many people throwing a spaghetti at the wall for their strategy. And really there are usually, depending on the size of your business, there's usually a lot of limited bandwidth that you have to be able to make decisions and to be able to market your business. And so rather than doing all things or being all things to all people, we want to make sure that we're being very intentional with the time and the resources that we have and that we're using them wisely. And so by setting priorities in your business about where you want to go and having marketing objectives that support those priorities, you can set key performance indicators that are going to help you get there. So let's just do an example from a high level. Let's say you are a service-based business owner and you want to get five new clients over the next quarter. You then need to work backwards and just think through, okay, why do I want five new clients? At what price point will I sell them? What does this accomplish? Well, maybe it's growth. Maybe it's a revenue goal for you. Maybe it's both of those things. But you want to get very clear on, okay, what is that goal? And the next step is going to be thinking, okay, what does that allow me to do? And what steps have I already taken? Not just doing something new. What steps have I already taken that have contributed to maybe a lesser version of that outcome? Maybe it's um, 
because here's what I see very, very often. We have these problems and instead of just doing more of what already works, we get bored and we get impatient and we start testing all these different things and we have no idea what worked. When instead we can just look back and say, how do we get that first client? How do we get the last two clients? Was it Facebook groups? Was it LinkedIn prospecting? Was it sales navigator? And when we're setting these KPIs, we can just look backwards and say, let's do more of what that was working and come up with one to two other supplementary ways to test that instead of just coming up and throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall. If a quiz has worked for you in the past, great. Then what changes maybe do you need to make to your messaging or your tone or toward the, toward the assets that you already have to be able to leverage them? So what do you do with all this information? Now that you know why KPIs matter, how they can support your business objectives, who needs to own them and maybe how to necessarily set them, what do you do with this? Well, you need to create them. You need to walk away and go ahead and say, okay, what are the top three things? We are officially in Q4. Uh, Friday started that venture into the last quarter of 2021, which is exciting because Q4, I know for us and I know for a lot of companies, is typically the trajectory of the highest growth. People have a lot of their budgets ready to go for the new year. They're looking to kind of make that hustle and that home run stretch before um, the holidays hit. And so it is go time. And so if you are ready to take massive action, then it is critical that you identify those objectives and you start quantifying every outcome that you can that leads to that and assigning them to a team member or yourself. And you're following up with them weekly, monthly, maybe even daily if you're ready to kind of hustle and making sure that you're accountable. All right, everyone, that's all I've got for you. I hope that you have an incredible kickstart to your week and that you've got everything you need to take massive action because I know that you can do this and you are capable of creating an impact if you just measure and prioritize what it is you need to do. All right, that's all I've got for you. On your mark, get set, let's go.